Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the lecture on compounds. So compounds are going to be kind of like affixes that we looked at previously, except compounds are when we have one word with multiple roots. So we have basically one word, but two different words that could possibly be the root or that could stand on their own. So here's a few examples. I'm sure you can think of plenty more yourself, but uh, we have the word break and we have the word through that can combine into the word breakthrough or pig and pen into pig pen or hot and dog into hot dog. Uh, so basically we can have standalone words that are actually combining to, uh, to form a whole new word. So this is what's called a productive morphological process compounding. Um, affixation is also a productive morphological process, but basically this is when we have a morphological process. So basically where we are um, taking multiple morphemes and putting them together. And this is a process used by speakers to create new words. Um, so compounding, when we take one word and another word and smush them together into a new word, that's an example of a morphological process. Um, affixation, when we take um, an affix and attach it to another word to form a new word, that's a morphological process. It's a productive morphological process when we use it to create um, a new word or to create new meaning. So compounding, where we take two words and combine them and they get kind of a different meaning, is a good example of a productive morphological process. So the meaning of these compounds is not always going to be predictable from the meanings of its parts. Um, for example, we have the word blackberry, where we take black plus berry, and we basically that means a certain type of berry or a certain type of phone, depending on which type of blackberry you're talking about. Um, so that one is maybe predictable if we're talking about the actual berry. We have um, white plus house, um, we might think it just means a house that's white, but um, kind of unpredictably, if you're not familiar with the you know history of American politics and all that, white plus house um, will actually means, of course, a specific residence for the president of the United States. Um, wisdom plus tooth. Um, there's really no way to guess that that means a certain tooth um, when we're talking about it. Um, so basically we have all these different compounds and we can't necessarily predict what their parts will mean when we're talking about them. There are some pretty common compounds across the world. Um, so despite some of them not being predictable, some of them are actually pretty common. So we can take the word I and then the word for water in a lot of languages in the world, the word plus the word for I plus the word for water is what they use for the word for tears. Um, so that's uh, the case for Lahu and the case for Thai and the case for a lot of other languages. Um, along the same lines, a lot of languages have the word for I and the word for foot compounded together to mean the word for ankle or the word for I and the word for bag, uh, meaning something like bags under the eyes. So there are a lot of compounds that are we will see across languages pretty commonly. Um, a few more. We, the word for fire plus the word for tongue means like a flame. Uh, we kind of do this in English as well. The word for bag plus the word for carrier is like a, a gopher or someone who just uh, you know just does runs errands for you, that kind of thing. Um, the word for fire plus the word for mountain in a lot of languages will mean volcano. So these are just a few more of those really common compound words that we'll see in a lot of languages. There are some kind of idiosyncratic um, compounds that are hard to guess the meaning of. Um, so there's the word for lahu. Um, there's the word in lahu, which takes the, uh, the words for dog shit and finger and puts them together. And then it 
gets a new meaning. Um, so that's probably a hard one to guess what it might mean. Um, there's the word in for salt plus stealer in Chiang. In Japanese, they have the word for dragon and love child, or the word for barcode and uh, gentleman. So these are kind of idiosyncratic ones, and it might be hard to guess what they mean on your own. Um, but if you kind of go out and uh, do some Googling or look through your book, you may be able to figure out what those ones mean. But I'll just leave those ones as kind of like a fun exercise for you to do if you're looking for um, a little research to do on your own. Um, and it, those are actually, I think, in your book, if you have the book. So you can, of course, just look them up there, or you can actually probably just Google them. Um, so there are examples of um, compounds in different languages where we have the same meaning, but different words um, combining to form that meaning. So in German, they have the word for animal and the word for garden combining to form the word for zoo. In Lahu, they have the word for animal and prison combining to form the word for zoo. In Japanese, there's snake plus bell combining to form bellows. In Chinese, the bellows is actually the combination of wind and box. So um, just because one language has a certain compound meaning something, another language might use a different one. So you can't necessarily um, assume that all the languages will have the same compounds meaning the same things. We can also see um, the same constituents with different meanings, so kind of the opposite of what we just looked at. So in English we have day plus I, um, kind of a while ago combined to form the word daisy. Um, in Indonesian the word day plus I means sun. In English, night plus crawl means night crawler, or a worm that we use for fishing. In Japanese, the same compound will mean to um, basically go around and uh, go around at night um, looking for women, is what that combination would mean in Japanese. Um, in Japanese, the words for hand and paper combine to mean letter. In Chinese, the word for hand and the word for paper combine to mean toilet paper. So we can have the same words combining in a language, but it might have a completely different meaning from the same words combining in another language. So that is the end of looking at compounds. Um, if you are having any issues with thinking about what a compound is, or if you want me to just kind of give away what the uh, meanings were in those kind of idiosyncratic compounds, um, you can go ahead and ask. Um, in this next lecture, it will be a little bit longer, I think, um, but this next one is going to be on morphological analysis. So morphological analysis, as we'll talk about, is what linguists are going to do when they run into a language that they're kind of unfamiliar with to see uh, what the meanings of different bits of those words are. So we'll look at that in the next lecture.